Hello and welcome to our short video from Ergo Medical Clinical Trainers. This video is a guide to understanding your leg ulcer, the diagnostic tests involved, the treatment that's recommended and how you can aid the recovery. I hope you enjoy. I'm Paul from Ergo Medical and I welcome you to watch a short patient video I've made with Betty. Basically what's happening with yours, if we look at this illustration here, we can see they're not meeting, these gates aren't closing. So what's happening is the blood that should go towards your heart with this picture, are actually going, the blood is actually going down towards your feet. Okay, now the only way we can correct this is if we think this is our hosiery on the outside here. When the hosiery squeezes your leg, it exerts pressure. And what happens is these valves, which are here, the ones that aren't meeting, will hopefully, look at that illustration there, now close. So these ones aren't meeting, they're now closed. And that will help this bad blood that you've got in your lower leg to go back this way and be recycled. What is compression therapy and how does it work? Compression bandages are unique, not like the ones that you'd find in your first aid kit, for example. They are specifically designed to give your leg a therapeutic hug. If you have a look at this diagram, you can see what happens when compression is applied. Here we can see the abnormal veins, which are unable to function properly. When compression therapy is applied, it moves the valves closer together, helping them work more effectively. We can then see what happens when compression therapy is removed. The veins go back to how they were and are unable to function properly. So what does this mean for us? So as we've seen, um, when compression is taken off, the valves and the veins aren't able to function as we need them to. Um, therefore, when you initially start to wear compression, you'll also need to consider wearing a form of compression as a lifelong treatment, just to prevent the health of the veins from getting any worse, but also to prevent you from getting another ulcer in the future. And the best way to think about this is glasses. Okay, so just like a lot of the, um, of the population, I'm a glasses wearer because I'm visually impaired. Without my glasses on, I'm not really able to see that well. If I put my glasses on, I can see beautifully. But as soon as I take them off again, I'm not able to see. And it's a similar sort of concept with compression. When the compression goes on, everything's fine and working. But as soon as the compression comes back off again, it just goes back to how it was before. Okay? So just as with glasses, compression will be required long term. The AVPI assessment is a test that assesses the blood flow in your arteries and this test helps the nurse to decide the best treatment for you. It may be undertaken in your local doctor's surgery, a health centre or sometimes a hospital clinic. It's usually undertaken by a nurse who has undergone specialist training. Before the procedure you may be sent a letter asking you to refrain from drinking caffeine an hour before and you will be asked to wear something with short or loose sleeves. If you do wear trousers, Ensure these can be rolled up or down, as one of the treatment options may be compression bandaging. And if you're anything like me, take a blanket to keep you warm. Just before the test, the nurse will ask you to remove your shoes and socks, and they will get you to lie as flat and as still as possible, while this assessment is being undertaken. It usually takes 30 minutes, but you may be asked to lay down before the procedure, so the whole thing can take up to an hour. Your nurse will then undertake a holistic assessment by asking you some questions and assessing your legs. Some of these questions may seem a bit strange, but they will help the nurse decide the best treatment for you. Once the nurse has undertaken both parts of the assessment, they can decide if you require compression, or if you need an onward referral to the vascular team or the tissue viability service. The results of your test should be given to you on the day. Your nurse will need to perform an ankle brachial pressure index, otherwise known as an ABPI, on both of your legs prior to your treatment being commenced. 
An ankle brachial pressure index is a non-invasive ultrasound test that tests the blood circulation in your legs and in your feet. You may be feeling a little bit anxious or a little nervous about having this assessment done, but hopefully after this next short clip, it will put your mind at ease. Your ankle brachial pressure index will include the following, a handheld Doppler, ultrasound gel, blood pressure cuff and relevant documentation. You'll next will take a blood pressure reading from both of your arms and both of your legs. This is to determine how sufficient your blood flow is. You may feel the blood pressure cuff getting tighter and it may feel a little uncomfortable at first, but that is completely normal. The nurse will then try and locate some foot pulses on your foot and different sound waves will form. This is to indicate to the nurse just how healthy your blood circulation is. Jennifer will now show you some useful exercises. Here are some exercises that you can do while you're sat down. First one is to point those toes and up and point and up. You can do this one foot at a time or both together. Your second exercise is to rotate your ankles. So spin that foot round in a nice big circle. And again, you can do this one at a time or both together. And the last exercise, if you're unable to do either of these, is just to keep those toes wiggling. And again, you can do this while you're sat down or while your feet are up in the air. Just important to do these as many times a day as you can to keep that blood moving. Step two, try to have a healthy and balanced diet. Your body needs nutrients for wound healing. So remember to eat lots of food high in protein, such as eggs, meat, and fish. And don't forget, it's always important to stay hydrated too. Step three, wear sensible footwear. These are shoes that are not rubbing or too tight on your feet. I know that sometimes bandages can make your feet a little bit bigger than they would be normally, so it's always important to wear something appropriate over the top of them and don't go squeezing yourself into any high heels. Thank you all for watching our video. Please take care and stay safe. Goodbye from all at Ergo Medical.